Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to our, our webinar today. Uh, we've had a lot of fun putting together, and we're excited about the program that we're going to share with you. Um, today, uh, I have uh, the great uh, pleasure of introducing Mr. John Laporte, who's the president at TASK. Uh, so, uh, software, previously TASK Retail Technology, but today it's TASK. And also I have with us uh, Mr. Kimiar Ferron, who is the founder and CEO of Talentral and Zippy App. Uh, gentlemen, if you could give a, a quick introduction to yourselves. Uh, and actually, John, I'm happy to go first because uh, Kimiar, I know you're going to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the subject too. So John, um, you give a little introduction to yourself, your background, and uh, you know why this is an important subject to you. Yeah, sure. Ha happy to do that, Michael. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. It's This is a, a, a very sort of personal uh, passion of mine is understanding people it, everywhere I've gone. It, it's really been about the team. It's been about getting things done and, and, and also sort of that work-life balance making sure, you know, you get the right people, you've got the right synergies. You've got you know, a very common term in restaurant businesses, aces in their places. You know, sometimes you, you, you come and you find people in the wrong spot, but this actually goes back. You know, we talk about motivation. We talk about, um, you know, wh why people come to work and people usually have a passion for something. Uh, and then they go to try to do that for a living. Um, and I remember in a prior, before I came into the restaurant business, um, I, uh, I actually was working as a diesel mechanic. I, I worked through college um, and I actually ended up in a closed shop union working for Orange County Transit in Southern California. And I'll tell you, I went in with the greatest ambition, you know, wanting to do all this stuff. Uh, and it was the most demotivating experience of my whole career. I actually hated cars after that. I hated <laughs> working on anything with wheels. And it had more to do with, with just the, the environment. There was really no culture. There was no, um, th there was no positive reinforcement of what I was doing. So a friend of mine who was working for, for Carl's um, and we had an, in, we, we were vertically integrated back then, right? And uh, we had our own distribution, manufacturing, we had our own field service, our own IT. And uh, he, he he brought me in um, and I didn't really have a lot of respect for, 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 for restaurants at the time. But when I started meeting the people and understanding their passion and, and the ability to serve and understanding you know, the end game and having a goal and pulling all that together as teams. Uh, it really changed who I was and, and really my outlook on, on, uh, on the business in general and in, in the restaurants specifically. And I've been hooked ever since. Uh, I married my wife. She was a restaurant manager, right? I mean, I just, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it, it, it's amazing how, um, how that kind of experience can change you. And, and, People that get the restaurant business, they get the they they understand who we are, um, and what we do. Uh, it, it, it's infectious. It's something that that uh, that you recognize. Um, but it's about a passion for people, and it's about a passion to serve people, understand people. And I and I and through all of my experiences in all the restaurants I've worked in, um, as either sea level or as a technician, or whatever, it's always been the same. You know. Mm -hmm. Thanks for setting the plate, John. That was great. Uh, yeah. Darn, a little bit about your background and, and also kind of tell us what this whole uh, subject of employer branding is all about. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, be in this webinar. I appreciate it, John. Uh, I appreciate uh, you being with us and partnering with us. It means a lot. Uh, so uh, I have been in the technology for pretty much all of my career and I have always in every company that I have been, I have either experienced great culture or not so great culture. And I've recognized the importance of culture. And, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur, about 10 years ago, uh, I started Talentroll and Zippy app subsequently. And uh, the idea was to help organizations who have generally a large number of employees and they have very high turnover improve their culture and uh, hire better, okay? And the imp uh, hire better gave birth to Zippy app, a platform for uh, uh, improving hiring and really improving retention started the movement of 
employer brand and improving work culture and bringing really the best that I had experienced in all my career as a culture to a culture that to an organization that has really accepted as a, the fact that, okay, we are going to have high turnover. No, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, that you have high turnover. There are things that can be done to really reduce turnover, improve work culture. And for this whole past 10 years, our focus has been to help organizations source and qualify candidates better and faster, streamline their hiring process, increase retention, and ultimately reduce their labor cost. Labor cost is a huge component of uh, food service industry and reducing it will definitely impact the bottom line. So that's all the genesis behind Talent Troll and Zipia. And, and tell us a little bit about just the idea of employer branding. Like if you could define it, what does that mean? That's that's really uh, the, the whole the, at the heart of this. You know, really employer brand refers to the perception and reputation that an organization has amongst its current employees as well as people who are considering it. And it is an organization's image as an employer, including its value, culture, environment, and the overall employee experience. Employer brand really involves the, all of the activities managing and promoting the organization's reputation to attract and retain top talent. And the, the way I can quantify that and really bring it to life is really, are you the employer of choice for people? And the way you can really see that employer of choice come to life is when people go look for a job, are they going to come across your job because they were searching for a restaurant job, part-time job, or are they really searching for your organization with a brand? You know, uh, there are a couple of organizations that come to mind that have achieved some level of success with their employer brand. For example, Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, people, you know, uh, uh, Southwest Airlines, <laughs> you know, uh, people, when they go look for jobs, they, you know, they go to Indeed Monster, wherever they go to look for jobs. They search for Chick-fil-A, they search for Starbucks, they search for, you know, Southwest Airlines. Uh, you know, that is achieving an employer brand versus looking for a uh, cashier, you know, barista, uh, you know, team member, part-time job. So that is really where the rubber meets the road and you can really gauge how your employer brand is working if people are starting to look for your brand by its name. So that's, you know, that's interesting, Kamar. Um, the you, you mentioned earlier that you know by you, you having a strong employer brand, having a good culture, and and hiring the right people, you can lower your cost. I've been with a lot of companies that I've been with. They they thought, okay, we got to start turning these people over to lower that average check. So because they were looking at numbers, they were looking at numbers. But what they don't realize, and this is something that I found out too, is that the passion that people have when they love your brand extends out to their customer, to your customer, right? So, so you're going to get a higher check average. You're going to get more repeat business. You're going to get, and you're going to be more productive. Your people, if they love where they work and they're happy, um, they're simply going to be more productive. They're more efficient. So that's where you save the money, right? You save money by driving top line, uh, even though their wage may be higher because they've been there a while. And I, I think, you know, you've got, you know, sort of what we call tribal knowledge. But but in addition to that, understanding the brand, understanding the culture is kind of that tribal knowledge um, and who you are in the marketplace, right? And and you should be able to sort of, that should be like what you impart on others when you meet them, right? They should know, okay, yeah. I just had that experience. And, you know, one other thing that people actually underestimate is uh, the uh, basically cost of 
hiring itself, the turnover has sort of um, uh, in, inherent costs associated with it. Of course. When you hire a new employee, it takes at least, uh, you know, 30, 60, 90, days to uh, uh, really get them to, up to speed. So every time somebody quits, you basically reset that uh, clock or whatever it is. Uh, and you have to train that person, a, a new person again. And that in itself has a huge impact on the, uh, on the organization. It's not just the paycheck that you write. Uh, it is those sort of they're tangible, but you know things that don't go in necessarily into paycheck. Understood. So, as we're talking about this stuff, we're actually going to kind of jumped into our first subject, which is really about you know defining company culture, right? And we we made some notes about you know the importance of using uh, the right kind of terms, team members as opposed to employees, and challenges with the terms of family uh, versus versus terms like team, right? What are other things that we could talk about inside of uh, the, the definition of your company culture that you think would be important to this? Well, I think as you grow as a company, a lot of times you grow maybe from a smaller group or or, or more of a family feeling, right? And so the, the, the family's good. Family's great. It's supportive. Uh, at least most families are. Um, <laughs> but 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 you don't have that sense of accountability. You don't have that sense of... of of sort of sort of you've got to get this done or else or i mean there's there, there's mandates the profitability things that that companies so so as i've grown with companies you've got this smaller company feeling which usually has a lot of culture a lot of core values that are wonderful they're supportive nurturing Everybody knows who they are in the brand. You've got the the founder probably around somewhere. You've got all of that kind of in place. And as you grow to the next level, you have to try to keep a balance between that and, and starting to shift to a large company. You have to start thinking like a large company before you can be a large camp company. And a lot of this has to do with the behavior around and the structure that 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 you need to provide, right? You, you've got to, you got to think in terms of, okay. Can I do this same thing at a thousand locations? You know, like, can I manage this way? Can I do whatever I'm doing this way? So those challenges come up. Um, and a lot of times to sort of jumpstart this, we, we jump to efficiency and we lose the culture piece. And then you've got companies that grow fast and all of a sudden they don't know who they are in the market, or you've got a, a leadership that leaves and all of a sudden you've lost who you are and the culture goes away too. Kamar? Yeah, you know, it's really culture is one of the most important element of an organization. And, um, you know, uh, it's one of my favorite uh, uh, writers and poets, Antoine de Saint-Zupéry. Uh, this is what he said. He said, if you wish to build a ship, do not divide men into teams and send them to forests to cut wood. Instead, teach them to long for the vast and endless sea. You know, it is really about communicating that mission statement. And generally, when you look at the mission statement uh, of any entrepreneur starting a uh, business is not necessarily, you know, to make money. Yes, making money is, uh, you know, is a good thing, but they don't necessarily start off with saying, I'm going to do something to make money. You know, you start with a vision. You start with, and in the restaurant industry, you start with the uh, vision that you are going to develop this concept and this concept is going to be this. And you really think about it from the moment the guest engages with your brand or they step into the doors, uh, you know, what is their entire experience going to be? And that is something that uh, the founder actually puts some thought into and crafts that really that experience and orchestrates that vision into 
uh, an experience that somebody can say, that was wonderful. You know, when you come in and from the moment they, they step in, how they get greeted, how they get seated, you know, the seats, the, you know, the tablecloth, whether there is one or not, you know, uh, uh, from the moment uh, somebody or you go to the counter, all of it is orchestrated. And how that is delivered is delivered through the team. And it is that team that has to be on board with that vision, has to be on board with that experience that the founder envisioned. And that is the ship that you're building. You can't say, okay, here is a piece of meat, a piece of bread, whatever it is, slap it together, you know, put it on a plate and deliver it. <laughs> it is that ship that you're building that the employees are delivering that experience. And I've always said this, that if you are not intentional and if you do not build that culture intentionally as you envision it, believe me, a culture will get developed whether you like it or not. <laughs> there is yeah, I think I went to that restaurant where they had the meat and just threw it on there, you know? Um, that wasn't a very good experience. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so that's the importance of culture. And that's what differentiates. I love that. I love, I love that we're, we're talking about these things and, and hospitality organizations is so absolutely vital, right? And, and and there's a brand that comes to mind. They say something like, it's our pleasure every time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. It starts with that. Thank you. Um, it really starts with a higher level of aspiring to a higher level of service before you actually say, what's the food? I'm going to provide you with a service, with an experience that, uh, you know, you're going to remember. I think it's so important for new people to come into companies to manage them. To understand that too, you know, you've got some companies that have been extremely successful. And then as they start to grow, like I was saying before, they may bring in some top management from like Disney or somebody who does a fabulous job in that area. But instead of studying the brand, they try to remake your current company in the image of Disney and it doesn't work because they don't understand the end game. They don't understand who we are and they, and, and they put some elements in place and they end up confusing everybody so mm -hmm. so i think you, you you're absolutely right and in, in in our business you know the end game is so it has to be crystal clear right you know a task we build software we build solutions we do all kinds of stuff but the end game has to be clear we have to understand that it's gonna it's gonna move the needle for for a brand where it's gonna it, it's gonna it's gonna create more labor efficiency it's gonna be it's gonna create a um, you know, a, a better experience for the guests. It's going to mirror that sort of customer journey in the digital experience. It's going to do these things. So when you look at a solution, it's the 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 the, the, the people. Everybody that's going to use this should recognize that as, hey, that's ours. That looks familiar. That's something that we do. Um, so there, 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 there. I would just say there's not enough listening going on out there. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's wanting to do their thing right they they so 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 again i i i agree and i i really appreciate um the culture side um you know w w w we actually take that and try to try to distill the, the elements of that into core values right so you know you 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 take the elements of this on a broader level and then you kind of break it down okay what do what what do i represent how do i want to treat my people and, and 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 some of the most successful companies I've been with, even even if they've gone through the torture of a, of a restructuring, a bankruptcy, where the where the culture literally gets destroyed, the first step is not, you know, cutting prices and you know and and, and trying to get the customer back in. The customer is, I mean, the 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 goal has got to be to rebuild that culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with some brilliant, a brilliant leader, um, awesome. Oof, who just, I mean, he took a company that was underwater um, and we had our best quarter. We finally, we finally broken, broken free and, and, and it was, we were starting to make money on the, the company had came, come together um, and it happened to be 
you know, just before the pandemic hit. But, but, but the point was that he did this through culture. He did this through focusing on people, you know, recognizing them and their value, and then help, helping them understand how they should behave under the roof, right? You know, mm -hmm. respect for everybody, um, you know, integrity in all actions, you know, those kinds of things, those elements that are sort of, sort of, no one can look at those and say, oh, gee, you've got an agenda. It's all about helping people. It's all about, you know, being successful. Yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, it's it's all about human relationships. Right. You know? <laughs> and the better relationship you establish with your employees, uh, the better work culture you have. Right. Human nature is to care for people that care for you, right? Exactly. Right. It's so true. Exactly. Hey, it's as, infectious. As we're talking about this, we're kind of slotting into finding the people that are going to be in the business. And, and you know, the subject of recruitment marketing comes up a lot, right? And uh, we know what marketing is, but what, what's recruitment marketing and, and why does it matter to me? You know, it's that's that's really an interesting topic because if you look at uh, you know really recruiting uh, it's no different than uh, any other product that you're offering you know so any other product that you're marketing and in recruiting the product that you have is basically a, a job opportunity and uh, how you offer that how you present that job opportunity uh, is really critical in getting the right talent interested in it okay so just just as for example you market whatever you know whether it is shoe car whatever it is you market it for a specific demographic and you say okay i want to i want it to resonate with this you know you want the uh sort of job opportunity to resonate to the right people as well Okay, so uh, all of the marketing functions that you have been taught in school or you've learned throughout your careers, all of those marketing practices, best practices that you've learned throughout your career, they apply to recruiting as well. You know, and if you look at it, you know, we usually say in marketing, it's a, it's a funnel, you know, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. And what is the process? What is the objective? What's the end game is to move people through the funnel. Guess what? Recruiting is the same way. Top of the funnel, people apply, you qualify them, you interview them and, you know, you move them down the funnel and hopefully you hire them and they come out of the funnel into your organization. And it is really critical to understand, okay, how are they really experiencing that journey through your funnel? <laughs> you know? How do they engage with you at the top of the funnel? At the top of the funnel, guess what? It is your job descriptions, basically, you know, because that's where they engage with you. Say, okay, so here is a team member opportunity at brand XYZ. Okay, how is that presented? Is it presented with... Yeah, you come here, you got to work hard. Kitchen is hot with lifting 50 pounds and so on and so forth. Uh, is that it or is this an environment that you come in and you can grow with us? You know, we can deliver exemplary service. You're a part of the team and all of that. See how what difference it would make in people responding to your job opportunities. So recruitment marketing is all about finding the right channels that you're going to distribute your opportunities using the right language to uh, ex to uh, sort of offer the opportunities and the entire experience somebody has with you as a organization and as a brand to go through the interview candidate selection process and ultimately be hired, hopefully. So that is recruitment marketing. I think it's so important to come here to to live whatever it is you're talking about, right? So w when you go to work and and you've been sold that this is the great company and they've got the great culture and they've got all of this stuff, and you go in there and everybody's mean to each other, or 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 they don't have, um, you know, 
the respect for you that 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 you think you should have uh, or maybe there's just not the motivation maybe you feel like you're just the cog in the in a wheel um one of the things that i've found and and we do this here at task is that we will assign one of our key people to an account and they and there's ownership so we give them ownership of that of that customer and i think in the restaurant business you can do the same thing but it, there, there's nothing neater for me to hear like one of our major customers complimenting our professional services guy by name because they think he works for them. I mean, as far as they're concerned, he's an extension of their team. And I think that we do that as a business because, you know, not only do, not only is it good for the business, but the, the it's, it's a great way to motivate our internal team, right? You give them ownership of this process. You give them ownership. And I think in the restaurant business, you give people ownership of the customer, right? You, you you let them own that customer. And when they see that customer back, they know they've done a great job, right? In fact, I think that's probably the single strongest metric you have in the industry is, is, is the repeat business. If you can get somebody, if you can create frequency from anybody, you've won them. They're loyal. I mean, and that's what the loyalty, that's a personalization. That's all this stuff is about. If they increase their check, they may love a particular team or person, um, or they love your brand. You've got the consistency thing. You've got some other elements that 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 sort of are like a baseline you have to have. You have to make sure they're going to get that product and it's going to be as good as it was last time. But they're going to go to a specific place because of the the culture you've instilled, right, and the, right. the, the fact that that they know that that person that they're dealing with has their best interest at heart, right? And I think that's what you impart when you do this stuff. Um, Absolutely. Um. So as we go into the next subject, we're coming up on on uh, really honing into the people, right, and understanding their individual needs. And uh, this is a part of the the webinar where we ask a, a poll of the audience and, and kind of ask that question. And, and the poll today for this is, uh, why do people leave? Like if you if you think about it, why do people leave the business? And, and what what are your opinions there? We'll run it for a couple of seconds here, see if if the folks chime in. Uh, we have our own guesses. Right, and, and others do as well. So uh, we were interested in to, to hear yours. Give another second or two. Dramatic pause. Okay, we're going to wrap it now. And our results were that uh, it's really kind of a 50 50 split. Uh, half of the people said company and culture, the other people said uh, they leave their boss. Which is the same thing, pretty much. You know? I think so. <laughs> so that, 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 that's so the... interrelated. You know, uh, it, it's that's absolutely correct. You know, people quit their bosses. The speed of the team is the speed of the leader. Yep. You know, I I, I met I, the company I'm with. I, actually, when I was in charge of IT at El Puyo Loco, I met the founder of Task. And uh, Michael, you may remember these. Um, <laughs> uh, if I took you in my hallway downstairs, it's embarrassing how many of those I have on the so wall. Kim Howden gave was giving everybody these. I think he got in trouble because he spent so much money on them. But but at the end of the day, he was the founder. I think it's time for these boom rays to come home actually. Um, and I'd love to talk to everybody, but, but at the end of the day, I knew there was a, there was a level of this company that was long lasting and it had to do, it had to be the culture. It was the culture of, of giving of, 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 and the personality. So, so, so you, you, you have a personality and a brand also, so that all of that comes together. You know, you look at like, like a black bear restaurant, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of a cabin and it's, it's got, you know, a, 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 a large bear claw that you can get. That's like as big as a bear claw. <laughs> I mean, it's like, if anybody can finish this donut, I mean, I'll give them 10 bucks or something. I mean, it's like huge, <laughs> but anyway, the, I guess the point is you've got, you, you've got branding and culture, you, who you are in the, in, in, in the marketplace, but also there's a there's sort of a kindness about that and 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 it extends out to 
the fact that it really it's your people. The people have to support this and have to understand it. Um, and and they're the ones that impart again the same culture, the same sense of we got your back. We, you know, we are we're here to serve you. Um, and again, that's that, that that's the magic in this business in general. I mean, yeah. people that people that understand the service and understand service to people, it's not only it's not only good for business, but it makes everybody feel good when they're doing nice things and helping other people. Our, our teams are like, does this does this help the general manager more? You know, that, that we we always kind of run things through like how how much impact are we having on our customer and 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 for us because our our restaurant companies they they spend a lot of time and they 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 tell their managers to provide the very best guest service they can and their teams to provide the very best guest service they can to their customers our job is to provide the very best customer service we can to them Right. I mean, so it's all about service and people servicing each other. Yeah. You know, and, and to the point that you made earlier about, uh, you know, the culture being what you advertise, it's the authenticity of that culture. Right. You, right. You cannot say one thing. And, uh, you know, when they come in, they see that everybody hates each other. You know, uh, that authenticity, that uh, genuineness of that culture it would be obvious from the first shift, actually, you, know? <laughs> you come into the first shift, you know, and you will see how everybody is treated and they can guess I mean, they can experience that themselves. If it is truly a culture of inclusion, a culture of respect, a culture of caring versus a backstabbing culture. <laughs> yeah. And I think to your point, you have to, you have to actively put that in place. Absolutely. Otherwise, I think I heard you say you end up with the Frankenstein culture, which doesn't sound like a place I want to work. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One will get developed, whether you like it or not. It will become something, becomes a Frankenstein monster that you must say, where did this come from? Well, you know, you let it grow. <laughs> you know? Unless you, you like Frankenstein. Grow. I don't yeah. know. So, there may be some people who like Frankenstein. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could be a bad example. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, but it is really the importance of walking that talk. And right. that employer brand that we talk about is not just some pretty words on, uh, you know, on the job description. It really has to carry all the way through uh, to delivering that experience. And that experience that you envision can only be delivered by people that are bought into that shipbuilding. You know, they're bought into the vision of this company. They're bought into the vision that, yes, we are more than just a chicken sandwich or a cup of coffee. You know, we are really providing a service. And that service is you know, an experience of, uh, you know, uh, good food and company of your loved ones. You know, it's interesting when I, one of the things that we would did, we did a lot when I was working at, re at the restaurant businesses, we would put the corporate office into back to basics day. They would, they, we'd, we'd all have to work into a restaurant, right? So, <clears throat> so I remember working at Carl's and I said, give me the dirtiest job you got, right? So they get they 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 let me clean out like this ball pit where the kids play. I mean, there was stuff in there I don't even want to mention, but but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, I was thinking all the while I was doing that, it wasn't fun work, but I was thinking, you know, whenever I plan a party at home, I have to I have to clean everything up first, right? You're preparing for the visit, you're preparing the location, you're preparing all of that for the, for the, for, and, and, and so you don't even think about the mundane task when you've got a good culture, you've got that focus in mind all the time. And even through the mundane tasks, it's okay. You know, you, you, you could, and, and then when the, and then when the kids finally come in and you see them playing in the pit, you can kind of feel good. Well, at least they didn't, they didn't <laughs> see that thing I got out of there, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, 
but, exactly. It's that that experience. It's you know every act goes into that experience. You, you know uh, that playpen, play pit that you, you're talking about. If if it is filthy <clears throat> and if it is dirty, you know parents will say no, 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 don't go near that thing. <laughs> you know, but if it is a clean and pristine thing, you know, go kids, have fun. You know, <laughs> uh, it's. It, the entire, again, experience is well thought out and every detail is paid attention. Right. And if you've got if you've got good people with that culture, they'll make good decisions for you too. Yeah, right. Like exactly. In, in the heat of the moment. You can trust you and can you trust. can decentralize more. You, you can mm -hmm. say, hey, absolutely. We've they're they're gonna behave just like Carl Karcher would. You know, if if he was if he was the manager of this restaurant, because we've given them. And by the way, when I was working at Carl's, Carl Karcher was our was our boss. Oh, wow. he, he he was from Ohio. You know, he was a, a a farm son of. I mean, all I know is when I shook his hand, I couldn't see my hand. He he had the massive hands. Um, <laughs> but what wonderful people like that who who really gave us some incredible brands that that. You know, getting back to basics for them is really understanding their culture and how they started. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that, that a lot of them would find their way if they've lost their way. Um, we see yeah. in, in, in our business, we see these companies that, that have done remarkable technology things over the years, and they get they get acquired by some private equity group, or they they lose track of who they are. They bring in some high tech. They think all this high tech is going to solve their problem or all this additional money. But but I would say some of those companies, especially, uh, and I won't mention any of them, but 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 it, at the end of the day, they were even more innovative when they were smaller and when they had their entrepreneurial, you know, founder in place and, and they were they were working arm in arm with their customers. Um, and I think you've got that the closer you are to the customer, um, the more you're going to be able to um, understand how you're presenting to them, but also what their problems are and solving them, helping them solve those problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, um, yeah, that, that that's that's the other thing that we're that I personally am concerned about is how much automation we put into the business today. You know, I know that there was a a group of of uh, you know Gen Z and millennials. Uh, and Gen X as they had on stage at, at the Mertec conference last year, and they were all talking about automation and what should we do. And they all said, look, make my life easier in the back of the house, automate those things that are redundant, but let me work with the guest. Let me touch the guest. The guest experience is something I own. So as we, as we modify these digital experiences and stuff, and again, I'm also an advocate of meeting the guests where they are. If they're highly digital and that's what they want to do, that's fine. But you can't lose track. The business is the business and it's about people and it's about understanding people and the people interaction. And I think the culture embraces that. It, it, it would be hard for me to like tell a program, tell a software developer how to develop Okay, make this cult, make this like this culture right now. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to program culture. program culture into this uh, software. No, that's not going to work. You you can't talk to Chat GPT now. Make it human, <laughs> right? right? Right. Hey, that th that was great. Um, thinking about that now, it kind of transitions us into our next uh, part that we want to talk about, which is really, and you've helped, hit on it quite a bit. How do you empower ownership? How do you get your people to to own those things in the business, whether it's that dirty bathroom or the guest experience? Like, let's talk about that that empowerment. Well, I do have something. Um, you know, I was just at again since my days of being a mechanic, I've grown back to really like cars again. So, so I got past that whole you know <laughs> union clothes shop union thing. So I was I was at the LS Fest in Kentucky. Uh, Bowling Green, which is where they real close to where they make the Corvettes, right? So, but but LS is basically the the power plant for for Chevy, right? It's, it's a Chevy V. They have different iterations of this. So so GM has a tent out there. They they also do like you know autocross and and drifting. They have all kinds of real drag racing. It's really a great day. But everybody's out there. So GM has a tent out there, 
And they're actually building a brand new C8 Corvette, very like, like the engine. They're building the engine from the ground up. And this isn't like a simple engine to build, right? It's all aluminum. It's got dual overhead cams. It's, I mean, it's extremely powerful. They even know how much it weighs. It's like 500 and whatever pounds. But what they do is they assign a person to build the motor. They've got a builder and, and they have a, and there's, it's like, a, like, a, like, like, an, it's like a chef. It's like the, an esteemed position, right? So the builder, and then when they finish, and that person, if they're not done with the motor by the end of the day, they take it out and they park it for the next day. So one person is responsible for that motor and they build it and then they put their name on it. They engrave their name on the engine when they're done. So, so you've got events like this where Corvette owners will come and they, they seek out those people that were with the builders mm -hmm. and they compliment them. Or maybe if the engine didn't do so well, they're not complimenting them. I don't know, but, 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 it, but it creates ownership and it creates pride and it creates, so, so we try to do the same thing here by assigning customers to our teams and 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 making sure that they know that you're responsible for that for, for, for that customer and and you're going to know everything you need to know about them to support. Now we have other people that support, but but I think in the restaurant business again the the most important thing is to own the guest and the the most important the most important element of that is are they going to come back? Will they come back after you've service, after you've they've experienced your service? And if they do, you won. So, you know, there's some brilliant people out there with with uh, you know analytical abil abilities that could probably tell you, you know, that metric, like who in your team is responsible for the most guests that come back. Um, but but the point is that to me is like the ultimate metric. Uh, and would be the thing that I would look for because it answers all the questions of quality, guest service, you know, expectations, food, I mean, everything, right? It's it's all kind of bundled up into one metric. Um, and so I think the motivation is giving them, it's all about end game. What, what, what are we trying to do? What is our goal? And letting them see how their piece of this benefits that. And if it's that exactly, yeah, and you know that that's such an important point, John. That in making sure people understand how they fit into that overall experience that you, as the founder or the owner of the business, envision. You know that your mm -hmm. your, your Corvette example. You know the uh, engine builder knows that you know this is an important part of this car you know? <laughs> and it's got to do this uh, so they take pride and by actually telling or informing sharing with the employees what their role is in the organization and teaching them how they function what is important in their job function what is important in the restaurant uh, that's when they are able to actually deliver that service that you're looking for you know everybody has value you wouldn't hire somebody if they you know for them to just sit around and do nothing so everybody has to do something and that function that you hire somebody for has a specific purpose so you need to communicate that with the employee that this is why we hired you this is what we need you to do and these are the important parameters. This is what the big picture looks like. This is how you fit into that big picture. Every right. action that you take, this is how it contributes. So, uh, you know, I uh, use this example often that, you know, you even teach them what is the value of food waste or what's what does food waste mean? You know, uh, if you that that tomato that uh, you you throw away or that piece of meat that uh, you uh, you know you don't process properly that order that you uh, uh, don't take accurately the, the food waste that happens all of that how does it contribute to the business to the profitability of this business and showing them that really this is what food waste does. This is how inventory is managed. This is how uh, inventory cycles through all of that. When it is communicated properly, and this is 
your impact on this overall picture, they appreciate that. You know, they when they hold that tomato, it has a different value <laughs> to it uh, than when, you know, they didn't know where it comes from, how much it costs or where does it go. So really communicating that is very important. There is a concept that uh, Lou Adler uh, introduced. He's he's a prominent uh, thinker in the uh, uh, in the uh, recruiting world. He uh, sort of uh, used the uh, analogy of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of need. Okay, and Maslow's hierarchy of need starts with the survival and then security, and then as it goes up, you know, it's belonging, achievements, and so on. Today. The world that we live in, you know, anybody who wants a job can get a job. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, we can have a secure place to uh, uh, to live if we wanted to. And it's really belonging and team that people are looking for. As the survey mentioned, you know, it's really that culture, that boss that really delivers that belonging and team member. Yeah, I can always find a job next door. You know, it may or it may pay similarly or even better, but how much am I willing to put up really or how excited I am to show up to work really differentiates your place to uh, of work. And, Agreed. You know, I think also, Kamyar, you know, when, 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 we, when we create tools for... Um, for our teams in the restaurants, a lot of times, you know, we we have these these broader objectives: food cost. You have to hit a, hit a food cost percent, and and then and then the P and L comes and you get hit. You you get you get like hammered because you didn't hit your food cost. Okay, so what does that look like on a daily basis? What does that look like on a shiftly basis? And can you put that in terms that I can understand? Exactly. You know, in, in working with various companies that have built back offices, for example, we learn terminologies, everything like a manager looks at the business a little differently because that's their perspective and understanding that using terminology, but also using like, and I'll just give you an example. We, we and this is probably not a new thing, but it's something that we came up organically just studying it. And that was, we were trying to come up with how do you order the right amount for the next yeah. order? Right. And you can you can you can do forecasting and you can do you can do that by sales or by guest count or you can do by 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 product. You can look at history. You can look at all kinds of stuff and then you project all that out. At the end of the day, when you're looking at at ketchup and you're looking at how much ketchup do I need for the next two weeks? Right. And you're trying to put an order in, you know. I've got this many cases and I and I how many cases do I need? Well, we just said here you put a number in and it says, do you realize you just ordered four weeks worth of ketchup and you only, and you already have two weeks worth of ketchup on your shelf. So do you really need that? Right. So, Oh, the light goes on. They understand. Well, I don't need any more ketchup, I guess, you know, they thought maybe they did. So, so, so this is, I mean, the reality in the restaurant is, is, is a very practical one. It, it's also, there's a sense of urgency about there's so many thousands of things that have to be done. Yes. You know, if, if we, we always used to say, you know, if you, if you were, if you were good at customer service with QSR, you could, you rule the day in any other, in, in yeah. any other vertical, because, you know, restaurant manager calls, they have a problem right now. And if you call them back in 10 minutes, oh, they're on another problem. Th th that problem got solved somehow. Right. So, yes. so you have to, you have to, so, so we learned, Again, they're back at Carl's. You, you, you're on it, man. I mean, if there's an issue, and you, you could, you finally mirrored. You were able to mirror that sense of urgency with the kind of call it was. So, 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 so I guess the point is, you know, putting yourself in their position really helps a lot, and 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 understanding that as you develop tools and you develop that communication to the team, they may not be getting everything you're trying to send them because. It's not speaking to them in their terms, right? So Absolutely. That, that that's why you a lot of times you have these operational services teams within the organizations who can craft, they can take this data that corporate wants to send and they they recraft that so that it's in the language and in in in, 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 in and, and and they'll understand it. 
the, the, at the end of the day, there's so much coming at these managers that it's very hard. Um, like you're saying, the turnover, you've got so many things to learn, not just about systems, but the ever increasing channels. You know, we talk about more sales channels, more sales channels. Yeah. I want to do catering. I want to do off prem. I want to, and, and what's the manager? I mean, it's just more, more channels. I, how am I going to cook this stuff? Yeah, well, we yeah, got to, yeah. how am I going to deliver that DoorDash guys here? And I've got somebody in the, in the dining room who, who wins. Right. So, yeah. so you've got, you've got decisions at the store level that have to be made. We're here to help. Right. Obviously with, with whatever the company decides. Um, but, but I think that, that, when you've got a situation where there's a conflict and you've got a manager who hasn't been through the culture training, yeah, they're going to say, you know, sort of like they're going to, whoever they feel on that day isn't going to get served, isn't going to get served. And it's not going to be a very nice situation. Exactly. You know, they, they may say some very unkind things to that person <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because they're under pressure. Right. So, so having these, but again, the, the the culture is the gap that 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 gives you that person that you can you you can give the tools to but you can also give them and trust that they're going to do the right thing under pressure and when the situation is sort of unpredictable john that sets up our next subject perfectly here um and looking at the time i want to make sure we we cover all the things we wanted to get to today um but thinking about that, right, you talked about the pressures on the manager, you talked about the people, the different technologies that are facing them and just the environment. And, and a lot of this comes down to what? Fit. Right. Find the right people for that environment. Mm -hmm. Right. And so how, how do you look for those 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 soft skills? Right. And and how do you leverage their strengths where where you might not have thought it been or or developing those people and finding out what they're strong at? How do you how do you find the fit and bring out the best in everybody? Well, you've got to have core you've got to have core technical capability to work in our team, right? You've got to pass some specific testing, and we do that through our assessments and other things. But we also look for things in the in your background, like like have you worked as a server? Or have you worked in the restaurant business? Have you worked um, on a help desk somewhere? <clears throat> Excuse me. And and I think that that you have that beginning of the understanding of being able to trans translate that, you you also have a, you also have a period of time where you're you're going through an evaluation before you're you're actually fully hired, right? And 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 we will put our help desk team, for example, into a restaurant and have them work, and and then get feedback from the manager, get feedback from them. They get more sensitized to um, kind of the environment that they're going to be working with or supporting, um, and then we but we also get a sense from them like do they appreciate this are they just going to be a stinker now on the phone i mean what is it going to i mean how's it going to be so 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 we have to be very careful with our own process but it's constantly changing i mean we find that the tool set like you, you, five years ago you, you you've, you've got a, a different group of people that came to came, came into the market for finding jobs and the group, the group that's now coming into market is different. I mean, they have they have a different set of talent. They have a different set of 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 skills and expectations. And, and expectations. They love their vacations. I'm telling you, so these vacations are great. So I go, <laughs> I want to go on your vacation because you've spent more time planning this than I. I mean, I, honestly. So so I think that the, that but understanding that helps you to manage them and helps you to inspire them right and 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 to support them in their own life we also have you know folks that are i mean we, we have a younger development team but we have some people that have got some very significant life changes like we've just had a bunch of marriages and we've got one one of our team members is going to have his first baby and you know so so understanding that and giving them making sure they understand there's a way forward through this right and and and, you know, I guess helping them go through those challenges personally and understanding that too is really significant. So I think the faster you can get to that point where they know you're going to be a supportive environment for them, I think it's sticky. It, the, the, they're going to leave. The, the reason they'll leave is probably something else, but they're, they're going to be highly motivated. And 
I'm telling you, between feedings, we're going to get some good development out of that guy. <laughs> yeah. Jamar, what do you think? You know, one of the things that, uh, John, you mentioned that is so critical uh, is uh, the, the, the life of a general manager at a restaurant, okay? They're very busy. They have thousands of things to do. And uh, the interview process, and we are talking about the candidate selection and, uh, you know, the, the interview process is so critical in hiring the right people. And if you look at the life of a manager and, uh, you know, there they can be up and down. So many things can happen. It is critical to actually design the interview process and the entire life cycle of candidate selection to completely understand and have that as a well-crafted process so that everybody goes through the same process. Imagine this, uh, your manager had a very busy and uh, successful, let's say, ru lunch rush, and they're feeling great. And the candidate comes in after the lunch rush, and the can the manager is feeling okay. Hey, yeah, you look good. Come on in. Okay. The next day, the manager, you know, so a less than ideal candidate uh, sort of moved uh, into the process or got hired. Next day. The manager had a bad day and is particularly tough and a good candidate comes in. The manager is not lenient at all. And it is very harsh on the candidate and a great candidate is lost. Whereas if the interview process is well orchestrated, well understood, same questions are asked of everybody so <laughs> that subjectivity is removed from the experience, from the interview process. That makes a huge difference in actually hiring the right person into the candidate. You know, if you look at it in the restaurant, you know, we have just a couple of hours to basically interview people and hire. You know, it's usually between the uh, lunch rush and the dinner <laughs> rush, okay, that the manager has a few hours to, to do a thousand things and interviewing is one of them. So how well we actually go through that is critical in really us understanding that. And another thing that, John, you mentioned earlier that is really important in uh, ha having you recognized as having an employer brand is you talked several times about loyalty and having the customer come back. You know, that's mm -hmm. a metric. You know, that's a very important metric of how, you know, is this a repeat customer? And going back to recruitment marketing and how you measure that in the recruiting world is how many referrals are you getting from your employees? Okay. Uh, you know, we all have seen this. I'll give you a hundred bucks. If you refer a friend, I give you a, you know, a coupon for, or, uh, you know, uh, what was it? Direct TV or somebody was offering, you know, we'll give you a hundred bucks. If you refer a friend, somebody like that, you know, but the referral, if you don't have to pay for it, you know, uh, if you, if, employees are referring their friends and their family without you having to incentivize them or monetize that, uh, then you have achieved something. Then you have achieved an employer brand that people say, no, I want others to experience this. I want my you know cousin to work here. This is such a great place to work. So Guys, this, this has measure. been great. We're, we're, we're coming up to the end of of our time here. I know we could go all day on this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and and, 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 and kind of in part and parcel with that, for those that are watching along, if any of this is interesting, you please let's have a conversation after this. Uh, we'll make sure we get everybody our contact information. Um, and and kind of to, to wrap things up here, uh, we want to run last one last uh, 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 poll. And it's really about now that we know what an employer, uh, employer brand is, um, you know, how well are you equipped for this? You know, if you're setting sales, your employer brand, how ready are you, are you for this journey? And, uh, you know, let's take a moment to, to chime in with your, your, your opinions and then we'll, we'll move on to your conclusion. 
planning the voyage. Planning the voyage. That's awesome. <laughs> That's always where it begins. <laughs> Yeah, so we're we're gonna end with that there. You know, if you're planning your voyage, if you don't know what a boat is yet, uh, according to the questions, right? If if you're on your way, or you're stuck at the dock. We'd love to talk to you uh, about where you are. If you if you you know, or or John would love to talk to you about where you are in your business to help you out, uh, or just be a, a voice that you can talk to as another peer. Because what we know in hospitality that we've learned through and through is everybody here has been for ev- here for everybody else. It seems. And we're we're thankful to be part of your community, gentlemen. Any parting thoughts here before we 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 end for the day? I would just say, you know, listen to your team. They're always changing. They always have new ideas. Um, ask them questions like, "What are we doing that's stupid?" You know, that's good. Well, because well, they're they're going to tell you if you've got an open relationship with them. Um, I would just say also. It's been a pleasure, Michael and Kamyar. I I, you, I met you guys at one of our conferences, and and uh, I I knew right then that you know you 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 are sort of the magic that'll make any business sing if they'll just let you come in and and work with you. Feelings Thank good, you. pleasure. Uh, I uh, just leave uh, the audience with one parting question that I invite you to ask of yourself. Uh, you know, and the question that we help uh, one of our clients craft is, is the person you're looking for looking for you? I invite you to think about this. Is the person you're looking for looking for you? We all have these high expectations that I want somebody that is this, this, and this. And, but is that person looking for you? Are you offering that opportunity and uh, to that ideal candidate? And if not, why? So I invite you to ask that question of your org- entire organization. Fantastic. Gentlemen, thank you so much for, for a great session. It's been enlightening. And uh, we're looking forward to the next one. Have everybody, so everybody have a wonderful day. And thank you for your investment of time with us. Thank Bye-bye. you.